Allah, I can feel the love for the people in your eyes. Mm. So I believe it matches what the Prophet ﷺ had at that moment. So I would like to elaborate more on this, but let, let us take this phone call. We have a sister from Syria, Sister Ilham. Salam alaikum, sister. Okay, how are you, sister? Alhamdulillah, how are you? Alhamdulillah, go ahead, please. How are you, my brother Yusuf? Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. How are you? I'm so happy because you are Muslim. Amen. <laughs> Actually, I have some points that I mentioned in them quickly, please. First of all, in the last episode, you, was, you were talking about the death of the mother and the grandfather of our Prophet, maybe it's and, uh, and betting upon him, and how sad he was, and even he was in a bad situation, he has responsibility about himself and about the other people around him. So here we have to, uh, to learn two important things. The first one is we must have responsibility. And our responsibility now is to convey the Islamic message as the Prophet had conveyed. And our duty also is to follow his state. The second thing is we all know that Allah is the most merciful and the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is the best creation. And Allah loves him more than anyone. Yet he tested him in a young age. So this is the message for those people who have both big problems in life. They mustn't say why Allah does that and this. They have, uh, they have to be patient as the Prophet. And I'm sure if they read the Sira, uh, they will know that the Prophet uh, is the, <coughs> if, they, uh, if they read the, uh, if they read the Sira and uh, they know how Allah tested his Prophet and how patient the Prophet was, uh, uh, so Allah, uh, so all of us have to take uh, the Prophet as the best example. We have to learn from him and to follow his steps. Uh, by the way, you may remember me, I talked to you last live episode and I told you about my English language. So please excuse me if I have made any mistake. Thank you again. Please keep me in your dua. I'm your sister Ilham from Syria. MashaAllah, MashaAllah. Yes, we'll keep you in our dua. We, we just love the fact that you call in. And uh, I guess you could say you've got sisters now as uh, teachers of Islam on the show. Inshallah. Even though you're not here physically in the studio, you're certainly with us in spirit. And your lesson is very good for us. We Inshallah. all benefit from that. Inshallah. Very good. Uh, can I take another phone call, Sheikh? Uh, you're running the show. I'm okay. just watching you operate. No, you are our guest today, <laughs> so you can say whatever you want. <laughs> uh, okay, we'll take another phone call from Egypt. Salam alaikum. Salam alaikum. Salam alaikum. Salam alaikum. Uh, I, I'm in air now. Hello? Yes, go oh, ahead. Yeah. You are live, Akhi. Go on. <laughs> okay. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh Yusuf. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. How are Sheikh, you? Sheikh, uh, really, I'm so happy that you are here in Egypt. Thank welcome, you so much. Welcome. R really, I, I would like to see you and only to, to, to kiss your head. Really, Allah, ya Sheikh. <laughs> No, I'm not, the, I'm not the star of that show. Actually, me coming to Islam, there's a lot more to it than that. Uh, the one who actually brought me to Islam is from Egypt, Muhammad Abdul Rahman. And there was a Catholic yes, priest uh, accepted Islam at the same time. I'm just a small character. I, I saw him in, in, in Rahma channel. May Allah reward him the best, inshallah, Sheikh. I wish we could get him on this show. That would be great. <laughs> inshallah, we will see what we can do about this. Okay, Sheikh, I want to ask you about if you have any public shows or any public lectures here in Egypt, we can attend it or something. Actually, we we are only just doing these programs for Huda TV, and there isn't really time for public lectures here. And all of my public lectures are actually in English, and most all of it's done in America anyway. So. Uh, uh, don't look for that to happen here, but keep watching Huda TV. You'll get plenty of chance for that right here. Inshallah. Sh Sheikh, what's your advice for the Christians here in Egypt who, who, when, who when they s see some, some verses in uh, the, the Holy Bible talking about that Jesus is, uh, is uh, a messenger in John 3.17, that uh, uh, th this is the eternal life that uh, know you, the only true God, and Jesus that... Uh, you, uh, that you have sent. What's the explanation for 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 for, the, for those uh, verses for them, and what you advise them? Well, I think you've already set up the tone for it in the question itself. But what I would rather do is give advice to the Muslims here in Egypt about how they should treat the Christians who live here, because yeah, very good also. Yeah, because uh, I, I want to tell you that I think you guys are doing a super job in some areas. I think the, I'm talking about Egyptians now in general, because the Egyptian Christians and Egyptian Muslims, uh, the Egyptians in general, they, they have some very sweet qualities about them. One of them is the famous Ibtisam, the smile of the Egyptian is world famous. And I like that. 
What I'd like to see, though, more is that uh, Christians and Muslims look for some of the areas where we are very compatible and, in fact, saying the same things rather than looking for things that cause animosity, friction, and rejection of each other because on the bottom line, you know, it, it's always up to Allah as the, the final decider on who's going to be guided to what. And there is only one God and there's only one guide. Allah is the only guide that there is. Mm -hmm. And if I want somebody to be guided, I can't guide them. Allah mm -hmm. said it clearly. You don't guide who yeah. you love. Allah guides who He will. So uh, I'm looking at that and thinking, okay, how about this? Why don't I use what the Prophet used, mm -hmm. which was his akhlaq, his character, his yeah. behavior, his manners. And the more people see you act Islam and the less you talk, the better off you're going to be. I hold all my talking for these programs, but when I'm not on the air, you see, I'm not going to be sitting there yak, 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 all the time because it's no benefit. <laughs> yes, okay. Okay, I hope, brother, this answered your question briefly. Uh, but, Sheikh, I will, I will put some of the calls on hold. Mashallah, we're getting a barrage of phone calls. A barrage? Yes. Which What's is, a barrage, anyway? Yeah, it's like a stream of <laughs> phone calls. A stream of phone calls. Okay. It's, I think it's a military word used for... Uh, for bullets and uh, you're <laughs> right. Like that. Yeah. So it's this is one of those kind of shows. It has hidden messages in it. <laughs> yes. Inspirations. And I see. Peace TV did this one time. We really? were over there. Okay. We did a series of programs, and they come up with a name for it later on. They call it Peace Missiles. I said, Ah, don't put that. Don't attach me to something <laughs> called Peace Missiles. They even show him. Yeah. In the beginning, I was saying. <laughs> so okay, Sheikh, let's get to the point where yes. a person who gives da'wah, yeah. who tries to convey the truth to the people, mm -hmm. what, what should be in his heart? How should he I mean, perceive these people? How should he look at them when he speaks to them? Well, I, obviously, just like in any case where you have two different entities coming together, you have to realize that you're one person and they're another person. And there's no general statement that's going to to say, do this with everybody and it'll work. In fact, the only thing that's going to work is if Allah's cutter is with it anyhow. So what you do, and, and I've seen it to be so effective for thousands of people that have entered Islam, is to just begin by remembering that's another human being. That's your brother in humanity, mm -hmm. which is a very important consideration in yeah. Islam. As far as Muslims are concerned, we look to every single human being and we say, you know what? You're my brother or sister in humanity. And my only concern is good for you. Yeah. I want good for you. And if I have that attitude going at them, I'm not trying to convert them. This is very important. Mm -hmm. You must not be thinking, I'm going to convert them, I'm going to convert them. Because this is dangerous in your own Akita, your own thinking. And it's not going to work with a person. People will reject that immediately. And maybe it will show on, the, on your attitude, the way you speak to him. That would show maybe I'm trying to mold you or shape you in a certain way. Yes, absolutely. How I am thinking is going to be reflected yep. in my actions. Yeah. So if I've got a hidden agenda, it won't really be hidden because my body will give it away. That's it, so yeah. don't have any hidden agendas. You want to talk to somebody, talk to them straight. Don't be double dealing, don't be sneaky. But you'll see other people will be that way to you. And when you see that, observe that, but you still be straight with them. Mm -hmm. Another thing happens is sometimes people will ask you questions that are loaded. Okay, a loaded yeah. question. Mm -hmm. Now, maybe they have meant to hurt you or hurt Islam. Maybe not. But how you respond will make a lot of difference. Let's say somebody comes to you and say, well, how can you be in a religion that will let you have more than one wife? Okay? So the attitude and the way they're coming with the question, and then you're just snapped back by saying, well, how can you be in your way which allows you to have all the girlfriends and prostitutes you want. Ah! <laughs> not the right answer in Islam. Yeah. It's very incorrect to respond like that, and it's also not true, because that you don't really know what they're upon, yeah. what they're doing. But it's what you're doing is trying to retaliate in kind, mm -hmm. and that doesn't, it's not acceptable. So how should, be, how should be the response? Actually, if I tell you this, it's one of my secrets, and I didn't know if I should give away some of my secrets on okay, your show. Okay, maybe in that way you can. <laughs> can I give you, the, okay, I'm going to, Listen up, I'm going to give you a secret. When anybody throws any harsh question at you, you should be prepared to say this. Very simple. Listen to it. Thank you for asking me about my religion. That's my... Believe it. Yeah. That is so effective. Guy comes to you, how can you be in a religion a bunch of terrorists and bombers? 
Thank you for asking me about my religion. How can you be in a religion teach you to beat up women? Thank you for asking me about my religion. How come you worship a black box in the desert? Thank you for asking me about my religion. How come you kiss the ground five times a day? Thank you for asking me about my religion. <laughs> you, so you have trained yourself to do what? To calm yourself down so that you don't respond to the attitude. Mm-hmm. You want to respond only to the question. Yeah. And if you don't know the answer, this is another key for Muslims. Learn how to say, I don't know. Mm-hmm. You know, in the West, they have a hard time saying something that we have real easy. Yeah. You know what it is? I love you. For the sake of Allah, we say that all the time. Yeah. I love you. Yeah. I love you for the sake of Allah. Yeah. yeah? Something yeah. like this. But in the West, they have a hard time with that. A guy just got married. Now, who do you love more than your wife if you just got married to her, right? <laughs> and you always tell her, I love you, I love you. But then when he goes back to work, right? And her, she calls him at work, you know, and he gets a phone call. Yeah? Oh, okay, sure. I'll pick it up on the way home. Okay. Huh? What? Uh, oh, uh, me too. <laughs> what? I'm at work, honey. Yeah. Um, yep, me too. Me too. <coughs> All of you too. <laughs> yeah, right? <That's laughs> this is the West. They have a problem with it. Yeah. Over here, we're the other way around. You know yeah. what it is? Yeah. We can't say, I don't know. And Egypt is the worst place for that. You pull up on the street and you say, can you tell me where something is? Yeah, you go here, you turn right, you go down over there, you get over there, you go this way, you go up, you go down, and you follow it, you wind up in the Naharneel. You're in the water. You go, what happened here? These guys can't say, I don't know. So in the Dawa, when you're sharing with people, and you don't know the answer, say, I don't know. But I will tell you this about Islam. We have two very important considerations. The truth. If I don't tell you the truth, I can go to hell. Mm-hmm. That's why I said I don't know, because I really don't know. Yeah. But the other thing we have is the proof. And the proof is preserved, and it doesn't change. So whatever Islam was teaching today is what it was teaching 1,400 years ago. Yeah. It's preserved, it's documented, it's authenticated, which means what? We can get the answer to your question, but you be patient with me. If I get your name or your email or whatever, I'll be happy to send it to you. Okay. Or here is a place that you can write to. You can write to this this address called Yusuf at shareislam.com. I got to sneak a commercial in there, didn't I? Alhamdulillah. <laughs> anyway, or they can just go to shareislam.com okay. and got another commercial in there and they can see...